Welcome to an intro lesson to boundary value problems. The objectives of this video are to define a boundary value problem and also to solve a boundary value problem given a general solution to a differential equation. Notice in these examples we will be given the general solution to the differential equation. A boundary value problem is just a special initial value problem. So for review, a differential equation that has given conditions allows us to find the specific function that satisfies a given DE rather than just a family of functions. And these types of problems are called initial value problems. If the conditions are given at more than one point and the differential equation is of order two or higher, it is called a boundary value problem, abbreviated by BVP. A BVP problem can have none, one, or many solutions. Let's take a look at our first example. We want to find a solution to the given BVP problem. The second derivative of y with respect to x minus y equals zero, y of zero equals zero, y of one equals one. If we know that y of x equals c sub one times e to the x plus c sub two times e to the negative x, is a general solution to the differential equation. So given the general solution here and these two conditions, we want to find a particular solution. So if y of zero is equal to zero, then if we substitute zero for x into this function here, the function value must be zero. So c sub one times e to the zero plus c sub two times e to the negative zero, which is still just zero, must equal zero. So c sub one plus c sub two must equal zero, which means that c sub one must equal negative c sub two, or vice versa. So they're opposites of one another. So we're gonna keep track of this. Now we'll use the fact that we know y of one equals one. Well, if y of one equals one, then c sub one e to the one plus c sub two e to the negative one must equal one. Again, we're trying to find the values of c sub one and c sub two. Notice how this equation still has two unknowns, but we do know that c sub one is equal to negative c sub two. So let's form a substitution here for c sub one by replacing it with negative c sub two. So negative c sub two times e plus c sub two times e to the negative one must equal one. Let's go ahead and factor out our common factor of c sub two. That's gonna leave us with negative e plus e to the negative one, which I'm gonna write as e to the negative one minus e must equal one. We'll go ahead and divide by this quantity here to solve for c sub two. This simplifies to one. So now we know that c sub two is equal to one divided by the quantity e to the negative one minus e. And since c sub one and c sub two are opposites, we also know that c sub one would be equal to negative one all over e to the negative one minus e. Remember, this is all the information we need to solve this BVP problem. We now know c sub one and we now know c sub two. So let's go ahead and give our solution on the next slide. So y of x is equal to c sub one times e to the x or negative one all over e to the negative one minus e times e to the x plus c sub two, which is positive one, all over e to the negative one minus e times e to the negative x. Notice how we do have a common denominator here, so we can write y of x as, this would be negative e to the x plus e to the negative x, I'm gonna go ahead and put the positive term first. So we have e to the negative x minus e to the x all over our common denominator of e to the negative one minus e. This would be a particular solution to this BVP problem. Now if we did wanna check this solution in the differential equation, 
we may want to write this in a slightly different form. We could write this as y of x equals, notice how our denominator is a constant, so we could factor out one over e to the negative one minus e. This would be times the quantity e to the negative x minus e to the x. It might be easier to find the derivative in this form rather than the previous form. Now let's take a look at a second example. Here we're given that y double prime plus four y equals zero, where y of zero equals one, y prime of pi over two equals two, and that y of x equals c sub one cosine two x plus c sub two sine two x is a general solution to the given differential equation. So again, we'll use this general solution with these two initial conditions to solve this BVP problem. Since y of zero equals one, we can replace x with zero in this function here and know the function value is positive one. So c sub one times cosine of two times zero, which is zero, plus c sub two times the sine of two times zero, or zero, must equal positive one. Well, the sine of zero is equal to zero, and the cosine of zero is equal to one, so this tells us that c sub one must equal one. Now that we know that c sub one is equal to one, we can rewrite y of x as y of x equals just cosine two x, since c sub one is equal to one, plus c sub two sine two x. Now let's go ahead and find the derivative of this so we can use this second initial condition. So y prime of x, or y prime, can be equal to the derivative of cosine two x, which is going to be negative sine two x times two due to the chain rule. So we have negative two sine two x plus the derivative of c sub two sine two x. That'll be c sub two times cosine two x times two, or two c sub two cosine two x. And now we'll use the fact that y prime of pi over two equals two to find c sub two. We'll substitute pi over two for x and know the function value must be equal to two. So we'll have negative two sine of two times pi over two is just pi, plus two c sub two times the cosine of two times pi over two, which is just pi. And this must equal positive two. Well, sine pi is equal to zero. Cosine of pi is equal to negative one. So here we're going to have negative two c sub two equals two. Divide both sides by negative two. And we have c sub two equals negative one. Now that we know c sub one and c sub two, we can solve this BVP problem. Let's go ahead and do that on the next slide. Again, we found that c sub one was equal to one and c sub two is equal to negative one. And now we can perform this substitution into our general solution. So y of x is equal to cosine two x plus negative one times sine two x or just minus sine two x. Okay, I hope you found these two examples helpful. Thank you for watching.